Hi everyone, and welcome to our uh, weekly live animal feeding. Uh, thanks to those of you who are joining us via Facebook Live, and uh, those of you in the future who are joining us on YouTube. Hello, future. Um, uh, today we're going to be feeding our um, uh, all the animals that are inside our here here in our interpreter center, uh, starting with our aquatic life. So uh, if you guys are joining me over here, real quick, uh, we're going to start with our uh, our uh, California uh, scorpion fish, Igneous. Now, Igneous is a type of scorpion fish, so like the name would imply, she does have some uh, some venom in those spines of hers. Uh, so you definitely do not want to get stuck with those. It's a bad idea. So we're gonna we're we're gonna, we're gonna feed her uh, some. Silver sides here. Hope she takes the bait here. Just gonna put that right in her face there. See if she takes the bait. I'm going for it. it. Looks like she's might she might be interested. There we go. So a lot of our fish here, um, they uh, they're able to sort of suck in the um, the food into their mouth. They don't, they don't really approach and take a bite and bring it into their mouth. They suck it in using using uh, suction. Let's see if she'll go for another piece here. Now you might notice that, uh, I don't think she's interested. You might notice that her coloring is um, very very similar to uh, her surroundings. Um, California scorpion, scorpion fish have the, have the ability to camouflage with the surroundings and they often take the, um, the coloration and appearance of either, their, either um, some rocky outcroppings that are nearby them or, uh, or in this case, the sand. Now if there were more, more rocks in there, she might, uh, she might change her coloration to sort of match that, uh, that darker coloration of the rocks. But given that sand is, is the uh, predominant um, landscape in her tank, you can see that she's taking on sort of a lighter coloration in order to blend in. Okay. We're going to go ahead and move on to our next group of animals. We have some swell sharks. We'll go out this way. I'm going to follow me over here. All right. Now these aren't the type. These aren't the uh, type of sharks that you might uh, might be used to seeing on like uh, you know the Discovery Channel or whatnot. Uh, these guys are a lot smaller than um, uh, than your your normal typical shark. Um, they also look a lot different too. These are these are typically bottom feeding sharks. Um, you're not going to find these swimming out in the open ocean. They're going to be on, on the uh, the um, the bottom of the ocean floor, uh, looking for shellfish, looking for um, uh, crustaceans. Uh, their teeth are are better adapted to um, crushing and um, sort of grinding up uh, food that would otherwise be difficult to, uh, to chew through. So they don't, they don't really have any big sharp teeth to speak of. Their teeth are, are, are better built for, uh, for grinding. So um, I'll have you the tongs here real quick. We'll go ahead and get started. Now we feed our, our sharks a uh, mixture of, um, of silver sides or uh, like, kind, of, kind of like, I guess, similar, I guess you call them similar, similar to anchovies. Um, and all, we, also, we also feed them uh, squid. Now the squid, is uh, similar to like their veggies. Uh, gives them important nutrients that they need in order to grow big and strong and healthy. That normal fish just would not be, um, would, would, would just not have. Let's, see, where's the other one? Let's go for yeah. on that side there. Now, the cool, no, another cool thing about these guys is that um, they glow in the dark. Uh, swell sharks have special proteins in their skin that, ab that um, absorb light, and uh, under, um, under dark conditions or underneath a black light, um, they'll actually glow. So yes, we do get glow in, glow in the dark sharks. Oh, I think you missed it, buddy. He's trying. There we go, he got it. He's trying. Let's go with this one next. There you go, buddy. Now, if anyone has any questions, whether you're here in person or, uh, or if you're joining us online, feel free, to, um, feel free to ask any questions you might have in the comment section, and uh, we will do our best to answer them. Here, take the food. 
Take food. Here, you take that. There you go. Let's go. Oops, you next. Oh. Or you know, just, you know, drop it. Here, take the fish. There you go. Okay, let's see. Did I miss anybody? This guy. Okay, there you go. Last piece. Who's gonna get it? I'll give it to this guy here. He's looking a little small. Here. Here. Take the fish. There you go. Grab it. Oh, here we go. One more piece. Once more here. shark food so we'll go ahead and move on to our large tank right on over here Near the fin, or not, not, not even near the, near the, uh, the gill, those are both uh, false eyes. Those false eyes, um, they're there to sort of uh, distract, or, oh, hello, to uh, distract, or, um, that's okay, I, I, need, I, needed to get, I needed to get wet. Uh, they, they're used to, to uh, distract and disorient um, predators. So just like everybody else, we're feeding them a mixture of, uh, of um, fish, squid, and we're also feeding them um, a little bit of krill as well. Now this is, uh, this is the same sort of stuff that uh, whales eat. They're, uh, they are a crustacean or a shellfish. And they are hungry today. They are very hungry. Now, let's see if I can reach our lobster down there, who is probably being very jealous of what's going on here. Let me go grab the longer pair of tongs here. Yeah, on the, um, the opposite side of the tank over there, um, we have ourselves a California spiny lobster. Now, unlike uh, the lobsters that you might find at your, uh, your local red lobster, uh, you'll notice that these guys look a little bit different. Um, rather than having those big meaty claws that you, that you normally associate with the lobster, um, these guys instead are covered with, uh, with spikes and spines and have two very large antennae. Now those antenna are often used um, to uh, scare away predators. What they'll do is they will um, uh, they'll vibrate those. They, they're, they're capable of uh, shaking the antenna so vigorously that they vibrate and that sound or that sensation often scares away predators. Let's find a good piece for him right here. I saw a fish head on a while ago. Where'd you go? Here we go. There it is. First of many meals for this guy. It's not for you. Go away. Did he get it? No. Does he see it? I think 
crab is going to take it. Okay. I will try again. First, let's throw some of this stuff in here to distract these guys. Okay, let's try this again. Let's see if I can get the lobster this time. the big doctor right now, so we'll come back and we'll, we'll, we'll revisit him later. In the meantime, let's uh, finish feeding the rest of these guys here. Now, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but all the animals that we'll introduce you to, to today are all California native. You can either find these guys just off the coast of California or in the, or in the Bolsa Chica wetlands proper, if you're lucky or unlucky, depending on how you feel about wildlife. Okay, uh, if you guys want to uh, join me on this side, we're going to feed our touch tank residents next. Okay. So in this tank, we have a, uh, a different assortment of, uh, of aquatic life in here. Uh, you might notice that we have a couple crabs in here. These are some, uh, these are lined shore crabs, often they're uh, also called um, uh, striped shore crabs. We also have some, where's our, where's our, uh, where's our blenny? Where's our bay blenny? Using it as shell. Oh, here it is, right over here. This one over here, this is our bay blenny. And we've also got some, uh, some kelp, some, uh, kelp fish in here, in here as well. We call the kelp fish because of the way that their, uh, their body is shaped. Um, oftentimes they'll, uh, they'll hang themselves kind of upside down and the shape of their tail looks very reminiscent of a uh, piece of kelp. Well, let's go ahead and start feeding some of these guys here. We also have a couple stars in here as well. In fact, let's go ahead and start with this guy. Let's start with the star right over here. So um, the stars we have in this tank over here are bat stars. Uh, named so because of their um, the way that their um, uh, their limbs are set up. So in between each of their arms, they have sort of this sort of webbing that's very reminiscent of a bat swing. That's why they're called bat stars. We'll go ahead and give me a bit a piece of fish here. Now, believe it or not, um, sea stars are actually uh, predators. They're carnivorous. They're very slow carnivores, but they're carnivores nonetheless. Here. No, take the food, not the not the tongs. Take the food, not the tongs. Here, food, food, take the food. There you go. Good boy. Okay, we got one more over here. We'll offer him some food. There you go. There you go, buddy. Now see right over here, we got one of our kelp fish who's bitten off more than he can chew, quite literally. He's trying, I'll give him that. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and like, take that away from him and give him a smaller piece that, no, I'm trying to help you here. I'm trying to help you. There. That's a little bit more, more manageable. Let's see here, do we have any more crabs to speak of? Offer our, our Blenny some food here. I think he's good. Now here's another one of our stars. Let's give him a fish head here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to bring this fish head right up to the um, the tip of one of its legs, and I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys can see it. Feel free to come up, uh, step up to the thing here if you can't see it. Um, his little suckers are reaching out. Now those are those are often referred to as podia. Um, not only is uh, it, are, are those uh, its feet, but it's strangely enough also its tongue. And that's how it uses. The, that's what it uses to taste. Because when you're when you're crawling across the sea floor and you don't really have a true mouth to speak of, 
it kind of helps to be able to tell if what you're walking on is food or if it's a rock. So it looks like he's caught on. He's reaching out with his podium. Okay, that's rude. Let's try this again. Try to get a feel for what's going on. No, go away. Shoot. Hey, you're hungry? I'll give you a piece. I'll give you a piece of krill. Hold on. Yeah, our uh, our kelpfish are pretty uh, pretty voracious eaters. Pretty voracious. No, I'm trying to feed you. Come back here. There you go. Here, you get one too. Okay. I got this star, I got this star. If I'm not mistaken, we have one more sea star in this tank that I'm not seeing at the moment. Does anyone else spot it? You see a sea star that I missed? Maybe I'm just mistaken. Well, actually, no. Where's Violet? We're, we have a we have a small sea star. It's uh, purple. Purple. Yeah, she's purple. I don't know where she is. Let's check underneath the rock here. There she is. So she's right here. Tiny little thing right there. This is Violet. She's she's a bit of a drama queen. She likes to hide herself and flip herself upside down and throw throw tantrums. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, to, I'm going to give her a piece of curl too. It looks like something might have, been, might have been nibbling on her arms. Her arms look a little bit shorter than I remember. So we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to bring that curl right up to the leg here. And you guys can see that the uh, arm is kind of reeling back, exposing the podia so the podia can get a good taste of what that is. And once she's decided that it's food that she wants to eat, she's going to bring that towards, the, towards her center where her mouth is located. And fun little fact about, about sea stars, um, they do not chew their food. In fact, they don't, they don't, they don't even, uh, for the most part, bring their food inside their body. What they will do is they will crawl on top of whatever, whatever uh, food item they're trying to eat is, and uh, they will, um, they will, they will, um, I'm trying to think of the word here, they, they, uh, they regurgitate their, their stomach outside their body. There's not, there's not enough room inside their body to take, take in the food, so what they do, is they regurgitate and they throw their stomach outside their body. The stomach digests the food out, uh, externally, and then once the food is a nice like digest, like dissolved soup, they serve it all back up. Which is very unusual. Uh, you can see right here she's she's being she's being dramatic. Um, it's a very unu a very unusual feeding tactic, but it works for them because oftentimes they will eat um, like clams and mussels, which are very hard to get into. So what the what what, what they do in that case is they'll they'll take their podio, their suckers, they'll grab onto either side. Pry it open just enough, throw their stomach inside, and let their stomach do all the work for them. So they don't have to worry about actually getting into the, and, and scooping out the, the, the meat. They'll let their stomach just they'll throw it in there, let the stomach do the hard work for them, and then just slurp it all back up afterwards. So it's, it's a very, uh, very unique um, feeding method, but uh, that is what they do. Also, I'm going to flip you over so that you don't get bullied by the, by, by the others. There you go. Okay, so we got a fish head over here that no one's eating. Back up. We're gonna feed, feed, feed this to the big guys. So we'll pull that one up. Okay, dope. All right, uh, if you guys want to join me in, in, in the next room, we're gonna feed our terrestrial animals now. Lizards. Actually, not. First things first. Let me dry my hands. Uh, we're we're going to start with our, um, our our southern alligator lizards. So our southern alligator lizards, lizards which are right over here. Let me see if I can get them out and about real quick. Them. Now these guys eat, eat insects, so we, we, we will be feeding them crickets. So, come on, get out. Feeding time. Let's go. There's one. I'm guessing the second one is underneath here. Yeah, she's got herself buried right here. There she is. 
So we have two, we have, we have, we have two uh, southern alligator lizards here. You might notice once they, uh, once they show themselves that their, uh, their body's kind of long and serpentine. They're often, they're often at first confused with, with snakes just because of how windy they are, but then people see the legs and go, oh, it's a lizard. Now, we are, we are going to be feeding them uh, crickets, but um, we actually dust the, our crickets with, um, with a calcium supplement. That way, these guys get their, uh, their calcium intake. There we go. Let's see, how that, let's see how that works for them. Now, very soon, they will spot the crickets, come out, come out to feast. You like to lick the lips. It's kind of funny. Oh, there we go. Yeah, they kind of, they almost kind of remind me of dinosaurs, the way they, uh, they move themselves. Heads kind of up and looking down at the prey and they kind of follow it around. All right, next we'll move on to our side watch lizard, which is about over here. I'll throw, the, I'll throw the crickets inside and I'll back up so you guys can get a better look here. Uh, but the uh, the side blocks lizard here, if you ever walk our trails, is the most is the most commonly sighted um, lizard we have here in Bolsa Chica. Very small. They usually have um, coloration along the sides. Let's throw a few crickets in there for you too, buddy. Let's get you fed. Yeah, that should be enough for him. Toss this on here. And I'll back up so you guys can get a good look here. Now lizards, like uh, like all reptiles, or most reptiles, I think there might be a few exceptions, are, uh, are, are cold-blooded. Now the term, the term cold-blooded um, doesn't actually mean, mean that, that, that their blood is cold. What it means is that they, they're, 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 they're incapable of generating their own body heat. Um, so instead, in order to get their, get their heat, they take it from an outside source. So that could be the sun, it could be a warm rock, um, anywhere that has a sort of uh, uh, an outside source of heat, so they will use that to bask, them, to bask themselves in and warm themselves up in order to, in order to sort of boost their metabolism. Um, it also means that, that um, under, um, under cold conditions, they can go dormant. Sort of go into, into a state of hibernation in order to, uh, in order to survive for a, long, for a longer period of time. Has our side watch come out yet? No, but I see him. I will rudely awaken him. Yes, there's food there. Do you want the food? We'll do this. Take that entirely. Yeah, I might, I might have woken him up, so he might not be too uh, hungry or pleased to be out in the spotlight right now. Yeah, I, think, I, don't, know, I, don't, know, I don't think he's gonna eat right now. We'll leave, we'll leave the cr cr crickets in there. Um, let him, let him decide if he wants to eat or not. In the meantime, we're going to move on to our amphibians. If you guys are joining me on the opposite side of the room. So, uh, we have uh, three different amphib amphibians here. Um, all are native to California, but none of them will you find in the wetlands. Um, those those Bolsa Chica wetlands, being a saltwater marsh, um, isn't generally a very hospitable area for amphibians. The salt isn't really good for their skin. Um, so you're not going to find uh, salamanders or frogs out in the wetlands, but you can still find them in California, just in other, other areas. So let's go ahead and start with our frog over here, actually. Let's start with pebbles. Pebbles is always interesting to watch, watch eat. Now, the cool thing about frogs is that 
They swallow with their eyes. Oh, you're just gonna dive right in like that. Okay. Oh, she got it. Mm -hmm. She got it. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, frogs swallow with their eyes. What they do is, um, they'll catch their prey. They actually don't have a, uh, a sort of, uh, retractable tongue like you see in the cartoons. That's, that, that's, com that's, um, chameleons that do that. Um, they'll pounce on their prey, they'll shove it into their mouth, and then, uh, as they're swallowing it, they'll push their eyes down, and then their eyes, just on the inside, will push the food down their throat. So they swallow with their eyes. It's very interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. Let's get these crickets back up into her line of sight. She is not the brightest bulb on the chandelier. She needs to be able to see her food. Go. Go. There we go. In my, in my experience, they, they, they seem to um, react to movement rather than just eyesight. So the more the cricket moves, the more likely it is that she'll hone in on it as a food source. Guys, out of the water too. There we go. Yes, yeah, you can see you can see her kind of retracting her eyeballs a little bit. That's how she swallows. Let's get let's rescue this cricket from drowning real quick. Only to offer it up as a sacrifice to a frog. There we go. Difficult doing this with one hand. Okay, do that. There we go. If that cricket starts to move around a little bit more, pebbles will likely see it and pounce. We'll let her finish her food. Next up, we're going to move on to our tiger salamander. We called him Tigger. Because we're original like that. Okay, so same diet. We're gonna we're, 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 we're gonna give her crickets. It's right on up here. I don't know if you guys can see him. Feel free to step up a little bit if you can't if you can't see him. He likes to cover himself with dirt. There we go. He is moving in for the kill. That is unless his prey decides to take a bath instead. Now, all amphibians, um, they actually, uh, amphibians actually breathe through their skin. Their skin's thin enough um, that they will, you're walking right on your food there, bud. Okay. What, what, are you, what are you going for? There's no food over there. there okay. Yeah, um, they breathe through their skin. Oh, there we go. There it is. Um, some amphibians actually, um, like our a garden slender salamander over there um, actually do not possess any lungs. They breathe exclusively through their skin. Their skin's thin enough and they, they keep it damp enough and their body's small enough that the, the oxygen that, that, that gets absorbed through the skin is enough to sustain them. Large amphibians like Tigger over here probably have a set of lungs that, that they use to, to help aid the, uh, the oxygen absor absorption process through the skin. Okay, so last but certainly not least, we will move on to oh, what is arguably our main attraction, our snakes. Now, disclaimer, um, for anybody who's, who, who's still here or is still watching via our feed or, or in the future on YouTube, um, our, our, uh, our snake feedings do involve live mice, um, not for the faint of heart. So you have been warned, if watching a snake eat a live mouse is not quite your speed, Feel free to either navigate away from this page or leave the building. Up to you. <laughs> so you have been warned. Uh, there should be a disclaimer above my head right now. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be feeding our uh, one, one, one of our snakes here. Uh, the snake that we're feeding today is a coastal rosy boa. Now rosy boas are what are what we refer to as extirpated. So an extirpated snake. 
or an extra excavated species um, is a species of, um, of animal or plants or, or what have you uh, that is no longer uh, living in one area. Um, it's, it's sort of locally extinct. Where are you, buddy? Oh, hi. I know I woke you up. I'm sorry. Where's your head? I don't see your head. I don't want to startle you too much. Come on, buddy. Let's go. It's feeding time. There he is. So this is Bobo. He's a coastal rosy boa. He's a constrictor, which means he doesn't have any of those nasty venom, uh, venom sacs that you have to worry about. No fang to speak of. He's a hugger. So he's a constrictor. This, this is about the max size that they get. And while you won't find them in the wetlands, find them in the wetlands anymore, you can still find them in like the uh, foothills of California. Um, got a very beautiful uh, sort of copper gray tones to their uh, to their scales, which uh, aids in camouflage when they're in that type of environment, that sort of rocky environment. Really helps them out. For those of you who are who are actually are here with us, if you, go, if you guys would like to give them a quick little pet, you are welcome to. Just uh, one or two fingers only. You're going to go down the length of his body and stay away from the head. Best to do this now before we feed him. Don't want to touch him while he's going, going for mouse. It's a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Bobo here is sort of our uh, our grandpa snake. Uh, snakes in, cap in captivity can usually live up to, uh, for the most part, about 20 years. Uh, Bobo, if I'm not mistaken, is about 18 years old. So. Um, He's old. He's a grandpa. Uh, in the wild, um, 15 is usually the, uh, the cutoff um, age, usually because if you survive past 15 years old in the wild, you're usually too slow to run away from predators. In captivity, you don't have to, not have to worry about that at all. So Bobo's a grandpa. He's old. All right. We're going to go ahead and move him into our feeding tank over here. Now, the reason why we don't feed him inside this cage um, and this is, and this, and this is a, a very good practice to, uh, to follow if you have, a, have any pet snakes at home. The um, reason why we don't feed him in his, uh, in his tank is we, want, we do not want him to associate an object entering his tank as food. So if you want to be able to handle your snake without, him bi without it biting you, you do not want to feed it inside its enclosure. What you want to do is you want to train it to recognize that if I don't bite the thing that's coming in to handle me, I will get food later on. You want to train, you want to train that behavior into, into them. So I'm, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to grab a nice, tasty mouse for our snake here, our snake buddy. Yes, you have been chosen. Bring the tube over to the feeding tank yeah, and pop them out. Yeah, yeah so, we, so, yeah, so like I said before, we do feed them live mice. Um, now, Bobo has not eaten in, I want to say, a few weeks. Uh, in the wild, these guys can go for months without eating. So we're going to go ahead and just drop this mass on in here. Let go. There you go. Go. Now, what Bobo's going to do now is once once he realizes that there is a uh, that there's food in there with him, he's going to start sticking his tongue out. Uh, he's going to start smelling for his prey. Now, snake eyesight isn't that, isn't usually that great. That didn't take long. Uh, snake eyesight usually isn't that great, so they rely on their sense of smell and their sense of touch and uh, touch and feel to be able to sort of feel out where the prey is. Now, Bobo was obviously very hungry. It did not take him long at all to, to locate the prey. So what he's doing now is he's constricting his prey, giving it a big old, uh, you know, hug of death. Um, <laughs> that, no, this, this, this has two things. Obviously, one, it's going to cut off um, airflow. 
It's going to suffocate the animal. Um, but two, uh, he's squeezing with such with such intensity and such force that sometimes it can co it can cause blood clots in the brain. So if the suffocation doesn't kill it, it's it it, it, it could also be the blood blood clots. Basically, it's usually a very it's usually a relatively quick death. It, the the snake isn't trying to um, cause any undue pain or or you know torture tor towards the animal that's trying to eat. It just wants to eat. And the quicker the, the, qu the quicker they can accomplish that, the better. So the, uh, the construction process usually takes anywhere between 30 seconds to a couple minutes, depending on the size of the animal and the size of the, the, size of the snake. Uh, once the, uh, the, the pre-item is dead, which it looks like it is, um, Bobo's going to let go, which he's, he's already done so right now. Um, he's going to hopefully unwind himself and locate the head. Now, usually, nine times out of ten, the snake will, will, will try to eat from the head first. Um, this is mainly because you know, the fur tends to run in one direction, so do the limbs and such. If they go from like the bottom up, then the, 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 the arms and legs kind of get in the way, whereas if they go from head down, the limbs and legs kind of fall to the side and makes it a lot easier going down. Not always the case, though. We've had a few snakes that decided to make it difficult for themselves. So right now, Bobo has let go. He is attempting to find the head. He's sniffing around. Like I said, that eyesight isn't, isn't too great. And sometimes they can get lost on themselves. Sometimes their their coils and their uh, their grip is so intricate and so complex that it takes them a while to realize where exactly they are. So he's sniffing around a little bit, trying to identify what's food and what's himself. <laughs> and once he's found the head, he'll go ahead and start feeding now. Some of you may already know this, but snakes do not uh, chew their food. Um, they, they swallow it whole. Exactly, they, sw they swallow it whole. Um, it's, a fa it's a fairly common misconception that they unhinge their jaws. It's really, uh, what it really is is that their, um, their jaw bones are structured differently than most other animals. So if you guys were to feel your jaw right now, you'd feel that it's one cohesive long bone. It's all one big bone. Uh, with snakes, it's actually two halves. So right at the chin, there's a split. Um, that split is where their where their bottom jaw sort of separates, and then also their um, uh, the, the sort of uh, connection or joint that connects their bottom jaw to the to the top of the skull can also kind of stretch open too. So, um, general rule of thumb is that a snake can usually engulf a, a, um, a prey item that's about two or three times the size of their head. Looks like he's found the head. Yeah, he's definitely found the head. And what he's going to do now is he's either going to unwind himself or he's going to pull the food out of the coil. Although sometimes they can actually leave, but the, sometimes they'll choose to leave the food in the coil and kind of use their body as like a hand or kind of shove the food into their mouth. It really depends on the snake and how big the food item is. So yeah, he's definitely found the head. And he's going to try to start making his way across. Has he, has he found the head or is he going for a shoulder? He might be going for a shoulder. Now, when, when, uh, when snakes are feed like this in the wild, um, you can tell this, this is a very vulnerable state for them. They can't defend themselves while they're, while they're trying, to, trying to consume their food. So oftentimes in the wild, what they'll do is once, they, once they've killed their prey, they'll, they'll carry it away to a safe, a safe bush or some other place that's safe from predators and then they'll start feeding. Because especially once they start to uh, bring the food down through down their throat, um, they're helpless. All it takes is a, is a hawk or a coyote to come along and have a two for one deal. trying to navigate his way around to find the best angle possible. Sorry, it's on the head. Yeah, yeah. 
Did anybody have any questions? Did they crush the bone while they're shooting? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, they, they, as, as it's going down, going down their, uh, their throat, um, they, uh, obviously there's, there's going to be a little bit of pressure as it kind of brings it down the body. Um, I don't think it's, it's strong enough to actually crush bones for the most part. Um, I mean, maybe the, the initial constriction process where they're squeezing it to kill it, maybe that'll, that'll, that'll break bones, but um, the actual, actual act of swallowing it, I don't think is strong enough to actually break bone. How does it digest the food? Very carefully and very slowly. Um, so they're, um, they'll, 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 eat, they'll, they'll, eat the whole, they'll eat the whole mouse, obviously, um, but their stomach acids are strong enough where they can break, where they can break down um, skin, bone, fur, meat. They'll, snakes are very good at uh, using, uh, getting as much energy out of their food as possible. So by the time it comes out the other end, it's, it, there's, it, there's no indication that it was ever a mouse. Um, they're very, very, very good at, uh, at, at extracting that energy from their food, and they're also very good at using it. Uh, because they're cold-blooded like lizards are, um, they don't, they're not using energy to make heat. So um, all, that, all that energy that, that uh, is taken from their food is being used for like movement, for, you know, for their brain. They don't, they're not using it, to, they're not burning it just to stay warm. So, um, which is another reason why they can go for food, for, uh, go without food for months at a time, because they're so efficient about extracting the food and then also using it. Fun little fact about, um, about most, most snakes, uh, especially ones of this size, is that they only have one functional lung. Um, they, have a, uh, they have a vestigial lung, so a, a lung that is not useful at all, and one long, a, a, one elongated functional lung. lung. Because um, if you think about it, both, their bodies are so, so you know, skinny and so stretched out that being able to, that, that fitting two lungs in that little tiny space just doesn't really work out usually. So usually they'll they'll effectively set they'll effectively sacrifice one lung and have one the other the other lung actually functional. I mean they, they don't make they don't make that conscious decision to sacrifice a lung, but that's just the way that they that they are. Now larger snakes like Rogue over there. Um, actually have two functional lungs because they're, they're, they're large enough and they're, they're wide enough to accommodate both lungs. Okay, so it looks like Phobos, he might be pulling his food out of, out of his coil now, possibly. Yeah. Looks like it. And it looks like it might be down his throat enough where you can, where, where you can yeah. So um, if you look closely as he's swallowing it, like just the back part of his neck, just, just behind uh, his jaw, you'll see, you'll see it start to make an S shape and start to kind of like wiggle around a little bit. Um, that's kind of their way of kind of like pulling their food around that corner in their neck just to get uh, um, extra muscle to pull down. So by making that sort of movement, it kind of pulls it like a conveyor belt down the throat. Makes it a little bit easier for him to swallow it. Questions from our YouTube or our, our, uh, our Facebook audience? Okay. So you can see the uh, the beginning of the of that food bulge beginning to be, beginning to develop. You can see the mouse beginning to make its way down the body. And you can see that sort of S shaped movement that he's starting to do, it's just to kind of pull it down the. Uh, Pull down his body, that down his throat. There we go. Just working on that spaghetti tail now. There we go. The food, food bullet is right about here. You can see it making its way down. And uh, they they, all, they also pull their food pull their food down the throat much in the same way in, in the same way that they move around. You can see that 
uh, a portion of their body kind of shortens, another one uh, elongates, and they kind of do that sort of almost kind of like almost kind of caterpillar motion in order to bring the food down. That's also how they move around as well. You know, some some snakes they'll 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 do that that S shaped side winding in order to be able to push themselves forward. Others other snakes like uh, like Bobo here they don't do that S shaped movement. They'll they'll move in a straight line by like you know tiny little uh, extensions and contractions of the of the muscles along their body. There we go. Bobo's all done. You can see that food bulge moving down his body there, and uh, he's still sniffing around, see if he see, seeing if he missed anything, which. He ate a hole. I don't see how you can miss anything. But some some of our snakes are voracious enough where they'll they'll eat multiple mice. But yeah, um, that's our animal feeding. Uh, if you guys uh, if you guys want, uh, we do this we do this every Saturday at noon. So if you are if you are in the area and want to see a different snake uh, feed, we do sort of rotate through our snakes. Um, you're more than welcome to join us then. Um, we also ex we also accept donations to sort of keep our uh, keep feeding our animals um, through, the through, through the generosity of donors uh, like yourselves and and the community that really helps us uh, you know feed our animals to um, you know teach people educate educate people and also restore the bolsa chica um, so uh, thanks for joining us uh, feel free to tune in uh, next week or join us next week um, as we feed more of our animals um, thanks for watching and thanks for coming guys.